and Dopus. It's Chico and Rufus here today, and it's Labor Day, and I'm not laboring. We're just sitting around the rig. It's hot outside here in Katy, Texas. Uh, very humid. Reason for the um, video, just wanted to do a little follow-up on the uh, uh, bad gas <coughs> video that I did. A couple of things that stood out there. Uh, and a lot of comments and I just wanted to answer some of them if I could and also some statements that were made uh, one in particular was that the newer vehicles uh, uh, some Ford pickup trucks and GMC pickup trucks don't have filters in line that are serviceable the later years uh, like 2009 I believe and beyond that is true uh, for some reason engineers got the idea they don't need a servi uh, serviceable filter which I think is totally bull crap. I mean think about it there's going to be dirt in uh, in fuel uh, there's going to be particles something is going to be in there and it needs to be filtered out however there is a filter and guess where it is it's in the fuel tank and it's with the uh, fuel pump and supposedly it's designed to last more or less the life of the car or truck uh, I think that's bull crap GMC doesn't even have a way to, to get at the pump uh, as far as I know from what the articles I read the whole tank has to be dropped and the fuel pump replaced because you can't even just replace that part you have to replace the whole pump that's what I read from the GMC site now um, some other manufacturers have made access panels to the fuel tank so that you can get at the pump but can you imagine that no fuel filter that you can service on a regular basis that doesn't make any sense at all to me I think the engineers who who came up with that idea are crazy because anything can happen fuel can get contaminated somewhere along the delivery line and in my case it was at the, the gas station so enough of that the other thing some folks said I should drop my tank replace the pump and boil it and this and that and the other thing I really appreciate the concern, but here's the deal. To drop a fuel tank in one of these things is no day at the beach. It's a, it's a big project, and unfortunately on this rig, uh, if you've been following along, the fuel tank has been out of this rig more than it's been in. So, you know, that's not an option for me. We're not going to do that again. The pump that was in there is brand new, and um, uh, another thing I just wanted to remind everybody is that when you're driving along and that pump is running, it's driving fuel to the engine through the fuel filter but that's an enormous amount of fuel that's being driven under pressure to the fuel rail and um, then uh, divided up amongst the injectors to go to the engine only a very small portion of that fuel being pumped is actually being burned at that time the remaining fuel goes through the pressure, fuel pressure regulator and back into the tank, so it's a closed loop. So I'm hoping that what was happening there the whole time that I was driving is that the, 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 the pump and the filter together were actually cleaning that gas as it was going up and uh, what wasn't being burned was going back to the tank so you know all around that circle there probably I don't know how many hundreds of th uh, times maybe even thousands of times because uh, as I say there's quite an enormous amount of fuel that's being pushed up to the engine so hopefully that cleaned everything up I do have a brand new filter there now I can't even really test drive the rig because it took 20 to 30 miles for the uh, uh, episodes to reoccur as the fuel was being pushed through the pump and probably those particulates were getting jammed up against the filter material thus preventing any flow to the to the engine when i turned off the ignition i'm thinking what happened and i'm not sh really sure about this but i have to imagine there was enough of a pressure drop where the particulates kind of probably went back and you know it's a pretty big filter it's about the size of a grapefruit uh, so, you know, those particulates probably got off of there and allowed gas to go through and then after a while it would, um, it would clog up again. I'm hoping that's what the case was. Now there is a check valve in that system so I can't imagine that pressure dropping too much. The other thing that could be what was happening and I really don't want this to be what, what I think but, uh, or what was going on but it's a possibility is that the restriction of the fuel and the fuel tilter was enough to overheat the pump 
which would cause it to stop working, causing it to not deliver any more fuel. And then when I turned off the engine, let it sit for a couple of seconds, that it was enough to cool it down and let it run again. I'm hoping that wasn't the case. I'm also, from what I've read, um, under the impression that when they designed the fuel pump and put the filters on the fuel pump, they all have some sort of filtration there. This one's got socks that lay on the bottom of the tank because the fuel pump always sucks gas right from the bottom of the tank. So water, which is heavier, everything is going to be on the bottom. It's going to suck that up first. All the particulates that settle, all of that stuff is going to get sucked up first. Now, from what I understand, and, and this really, um, I only found in a one website that even talked about it is, that the pump socks uh, that are on there are designed to eliminate the larger particles from going through the pump. What is able to get by that sock, okay, and, and then filtered out by the filter that's in line, the stuff that's able to get through there, supposedly the pump is designed in such a way that that will not bother the pump. In other words, it won't mess up the pump uh, by, you know, grinding up whatever. So, uh, good to know. Large particles won't get through. What is able to get through should not damage the pump and should be caught in the filter uh, before it gets to the engine. So, something to remember there. Now, the other thing is replacing the fuel pump. Most fuel pumps on the more modern vehicles, and I'm, not, I'm talking back as far as, you know, gosh, 2000 and, well, this is 1998, so even before that, they have a special little tool which you need to get the gas filter or fuel filter off, and, and it's kind of like a, uh, like little barbs that go around this nipple that's on the uh, a raised area on the uh, fuel filter inlet, and what they do is they open up when you push it on and they clamp down. And in order to get that filter off, you have to have a little tool that goes around the fuel line and goes between there and it pushes them open so that the filter can come out. Okay, I hope I explained that right. But if you go to a, a, a store, I even put a link up on Amazon to buy a little assortment of wrenches because if you have more than one vehicle, chances are that they're gonna be different size fuel lines. Very cheap stuff. Uh, good to have because you never know when you're going to need it and those those um, clips by the way aren't just on a fuel pump or, or on the fuel filter but they're on, usually on the fuel pump the same thing and on the engine wherever they connect so good little tool to have very cheap uh, some are made out of plastic some are made out of metal I found that the plastic ones actually work better so I wanted to share that the other thing is that uh, we are here at Katy uh, Texas and I have run the engine, seems to be running very well. I don't think anything got by that, that filter. The other side of the filter, the gas was absolutely perfectly clear, so there was no, no particulate that I can tell that got by there. And again, also, I think that the fuel that's in the, in the tank right now, there isn't much left. There's only about a little over a quarter tank. And before I really do any mileage, I'm gonna leave here. I'm gonna stop at a pilot where I know the fuel, or uh, let's put it this way, where I think the fuel will be better than um, any other places because they use so much of it and I think they take time to make sure it's in good, in good condition. I'm going to stop there, fill up, run the RV, uh, at least one, one full tank of gas, pull the gas filter out, see how it looks. If it looks like it's clean, then I'm going to leave it in there for another tank. If it looks really dirty or even you know a little bit dirty, I'm going to replace it with another one. Um, but I'm not going to do it if, it if the filter looks clean. I'll just keep running some gas and checking it for at least two or three tankfuls to make sure. So that's the update on the bad gas story. Just wanted to share that. I want to thank everybody for their comments, concerns, following along. You guys are great. Uh, aside from two trolls, which I have, which I unsubscribed, told them to get out. So that's it, folks. I'm happy, happy, happy. Rupus and I are happy, 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 aren't we, buddy? Yes, we are. We're having a wonderful time. RV life is great. It gets a little lonely once in a while, but not too bad. So, hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye! Happy, happy!